Anna, a young girl, lived with her parents in a small village at the foot of tall mountains. Since childhood, the mountains had been her second home. Her father worked as a rescuer in the local rescue service. Her mother was a doctor in the only hospital. From an early age, her parents taught Anna to respect nature and help those in need. Anna loved hiking in the mountains from a young age and enthusiastically attended a climbing class. Her coach noticed her talent in the first month of training. A year later, she was already participating in regional competitions. By the time she finished school, she had a whole shelf of medals and certificates. At 22, Anna became an experienced climber. She knew every trail in the nearby mountains. She could name all the dangerous spots and safe routes by heart. Local people often came to her for advice before difficult hikes. Anna decided to follow in her father's footsteps and become a rescuer. For several months, she prepared for the entrance exams to the rescue school and trained every day according to a special program. She studied medical and rescue books. The day before leaving for her training was unusually warm. The sun shone brightly in the clear sky. A light breeze carried the smell of mountain herbs. Anna decided to take one last hike before leaving. She carefully prepared her gear the night before. She checked every carabiner and knot on the ropes. She packed a supply of water and food into her backpack. She added a first aid kit and a signal flashlight. Her phone was fully charged. The climb started at dawn. Anna left her house just as the first rays of the sun touched the mountain peaks, taking a deep breath of the fresh, cool air. Birds chirped cheerfully overhead, promising great weather. The girl chose her favorite route on the eastern slope. The trail began near an old pine tree with an unusually curved trunk. The first hour of the path passed through dense forest. Then the trail rose to rocky outcrops. Anna walked at a steady pace. She wasn't in a hurry. She wanted to remember every minute of this difficult but very interesting hike. From time to time, she stopped to take pictures. The mountain flowers in the morning dew were especially beautiful. At a rest stop, the girl took out a thermos of hot tea. Steam rose from the cup in the cool air. Everything around was quiet. Only a light breeze rustled the treetops. After two hours of climbing, the forest began to thin. The alpine meadow zone started. The grass here was low and tough. Bright mountain flowers grew between the rocks, and the air became noticeably cooler. Anna climbed up to a small plateau where a breathtaking view of the valley opened up. She took out her camera to take some pictures for her parents. At that moment, she heard a strange sound, similar to a baby's cry. It was coming from somewhere below. Anna froze and listened. A few moments later, the sound repeated. It was full of pain and fear. She had never heard anything like it in the mountains before. Carefully approaching the edge of the plateau, she looked down. On a narrow rocky ledge, about 15 meters below, sat a small brown bear cub. Its back paw was trapped between rocks. The bear cub was trembling from fear and cold. It was trying to free its paw, but only made things worse. Every movement caused it more pain, leading to more crying. The situation was critical. Suddenly, a growl was heard from above. Anna looked up. On a rocky outcrop just above her position, a large bear was pacing nervously. It was clearly the mother of the trapped cub. The bear was trying to find a way to reach her baby. She attempted to descend the steep slope, but the rocks crumbled under her weight. Each attempt caused a landslide, making the cub even more panicked. Anna quickly assessed the situation. The slope was too steep for the bear. Without help, the cub couldn't free itself. Its paw was badly stuck. Eventually, the cub would either die from hunger and thirst or fall into the abyss. Anna took out her phone and sent a message to her parents, giving them the exact coordinates of her location. She also wrote that she planned to help the trapped animal and promised to contact them in an hour. Then Anna began to prepare for the descent. She pulled out her climbing rope from her backpack and checked her gear. She took off her jacket so it wouldn't restrict her movements and removed unnecessary items from her backpack. The descent would be extremely difficult and dangerous. The cliff was almost vertical. There were very few handholds and footholds. The surface of the rock was wet with dew in places. One wrong move could be fatal. Anna began her descent slowly and carefully. She thought through every step. She checked every hold several times. Sweat was pouring into her eyes and her hands started shaking from the strain. The bear noticed the human's movement and began growling aggressively. In anger, the predator even knocked rocks and branches down, trying to protect her cub. 
Because of this, Anna had to press against the cliff, dodging falling objects. The descent took almost half an hour. Every minute felt like an eternity. Finally, Anna reached the level of the cub. Now she had to move horizontally along the very narrow ledge. Anna slowly shifted her weight from foot to foot, trying not to look down at the deadly sharp rocks below. The bear cub noticed the approaching human. It tried to crawl away, but its trapped paw wouldn't let it. Its cries grew louder and more pitiful, so Anna started talking in a calm, quiet voice. She spoke simple, soothing words, slowly moving closer to the scared animal, giving it time to get used to her presence. Gradually, the cub began to calm down. Its cries became quieter, and it trembled less. It watched her movements with curiosity. The fear in its eyes was replaced with interest. When Anna finally got close to the cub, she was able to assess the situation better. The cub's paw was trapped between two large rocks. Luckily, there were no signs of a fracture, just a few small scrapes on the skin. The girl took a rope from her pocket. She needed to tie the cub up so it wouldn't fall after being freed. Anna slowly extended her hand toward the animal, trying to gauge its reaction. To her surprise, the cub didn't resist. Not only did it allow itself to be tied, but it also pressed against her, as if seeking protection. This moment of trust between the human and the wild animal was incredible. Now came the most difficult part, freeing the paw. Anna carefully began to rock one of the stones. She tried to work as gently as possible so as not to hurt the cub. It was a slow and painstaking job. Every movement could send the cub into another panic. Anna often stopped, giving it time to calm down. She stroked its head and spoke kind words. After 15 minutes, the stone finally began to give way. Anna increased her effort. Suddenly, the stone shifted. The cub's paw was free. It immediately tried to stand, but its leg had gone numb and didn't work well. Anna examined the freed paw. There were no serious injuries, just a few small scratches and bruises. Everything would heal in a few days, but for now the cub needed to be lowered to the ground. Climbing back up with the cub was impossible. It was too dangerous for both of them. The only option was to lower it down with the rope and then descend herself. Anna began preparing for this tricky maneuver. She checked the knots on the rope and made sure the cub was securely tied. Then she slowly led the cub to the edge of the ledge. At that moment, it got scared again and started to resist. Anna had to stop. She calmed the frightened animal again. She stroked it and spoke to it for a long time. Gradually, the cub began to trust her again. It allowed her to continue preparing for the descent. Lowering the cub was very tense. Anna slowly let the rope out. Her hands were shaking from the strain and sweat was running into her eyes. When the cub touched the ground, it didn't immediately realize what had happened. For a few seconds, it just stood still. Then it began to jump with joy. Now it was free and unharmed. Anna untied the rope. It was time for her to descend, but she was very exhausted. Her arms and legs were trembling from fatigue, but she had to act quickly while she still had some strength left. The descent took another 20 minutes. Every move was difficult. Several times she nearly fell. Finally, her feet touched the ground. Anna lay down on the grass, unable to move. The cub who had been waiting below ran up to her. It started playing, nudging her with its nose and trying to climb on her. Anna smiled because the little predator's behavior now resembled that of a playful puppy. Suddenly, they heard a noise in the bushes. Anna froze. A bear emerged from the thicket. It had found a way down through a gentler slope and now stood just a few meters from the human. Anna knew she couldn't run. She couldn't even stand up. All she could do was lie still and hope for the best. The cub continued playing nearby, unaware of the tense situation. To Anna's immense relief, the bear showed no aggression. It slowly approached the cub and carefully sniffed it. Satisfied that it wasn't hurt, the bear surprisingly allowed the cub to continue playing near the human. The large predator suddenly disappeared into the bushes. A minute later, it returned, carrying Anna's backpack in its teeth, which had fallen during the descent. The bear gently placed it next to her and stepped back a few paces. Anna struggled to sit up. She took a bottle of water from her backpack and drank it greedily. The bear and cub stayed nearby. It seemed as if they were guarding the person who had just saved a precious life. Time passed, but the animals didn't leave. The cub continued playing beside Anna. The bear lay calmly nearby. This amazing scene felt unreal. 
Voices were heard in the distance. Anna's parents were hurrying to check if she was all right. The bear stood up. It approached Anna and lightly touched her leg with its paw. There was no aggression in the gesture. It seemed like the bear was saying goodbye and thanking her for the help. The cub ran up to Anna one last time. It pressed its warm nose against her shoulder. Then the bear growled softly, calling its cub. They slowly walked into the forest and disappeared among the trees. A few minutes later, Anna's parents arrived. They saw their daughter sitting on the grass, surrounded by large bear tracks. Their faces showed both worry and relief. Her father was the first to approach her. He immediately noticed the rope marks on her hands and her rumpled clothes. Her mother pulled out water and a dry shirt from her bag. Anna briefly told them what had happened. Then she showed them the spot on the cliff where the cub had been trapped. Her parents listened silently, realizing with horror what their daughter had just gone through. Her father climbed up the gentle slope. He gathered the things Anna had left on the platform. He found her jacket and camera. Everything was intact. Her mother examined Anna's hands. There were blisters and small cuts from the sharp rocks on her palms. She treated her daughter's wounds from the first aid kit. When Anna tried to stand up, her legs gave way from exhaustion. Her parents helped her to her feet. Slowly supporting their daughter from both sides, they began the descent to the village. The next morning, Anna left for her training. She took not only a backpack of things, but also memories of the incredible encounter with the bear family and the amazing gratitude of the animals. Often during tough training sessions, she would remember that day. The memory of saving the bear cub always gave her strength. She knew she had chosen the right path in life.